Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from beautiful Govardhan Hill, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Stubadas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Govardhan Hill. Here with Miss Mara spinning the dials here. Kostuba is in Mayapur. And we just had an incredible day today. I think it was one of those magic days, Mara. Yeah. Magic, magic days, Mr. Kostuba. Was it? It was. Yeah. I We came back. We said that was magic. Me, Catherine A., and Miss Mara first went to the foot of Govardhan Hill with Burijan Prabhu. He was a, you know, an initiating guru, a prolific author, one of those devotees that joined in uh, like 1967. What is like amazing life? One of these Amer- amazing stories of a person who's just like, I'm going to give my life to my guru. Anyway, he led us through like a, um, what would you call that? Uh, meditation. Yeah. A lead, lead meditation. meditation. Act over, yeah. over, over. Yeah. So much stuff came out of us. It was amazing. It was quite amazing. And that would last. We just sat in one place for like two hours what doing nothing. Out? Time time stood still. What came out of you? <laughs> I can't say. It's private, but All right. I should, so anything. When I was, you know, he just he has you sp- speak to the hill. He engages you like in a manasapuja and you're speaking to Govardhan. You're sharing with Govardhan your deepest secrets and your your uh your strongest desires and 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 all of a sudden you floods out your material desires your spiritual desires anyways good practice he's going to do a retreat like that in february i'm going to do it with him um anyway that was one thing that was just that was just you know before nine o'clock then we decided to walk and we walked just a beautiful walk through to manasa ganga which is where krishna called the ganga with his mind and very beautiful and um, then we had an incredible, then we walked to Radha Kund and had lunch with uh, Mohan Panda's family. Now, oh. you gotta, I've known Mohan Panda since he was 10 years old. And, um, uh, you know, when I was 22, he was 10. And he is a Panda or the priest at Radha Kund that I've been going to every time I come to India since I was 22. Now his kids are growing up. So I met his kids. I knew I met him before, but the the mother made lunch for me and Mara and Catherine and Banu Nandini. And I will say, I've never met two Krishna conscious kids like these these kids. When I say kids, they're one's twenty, one's eighteen, or one's fifteen and one's twenty. But Mara, just describe this girl. It was like unbelievable. She was just like, oh. I am so lucky. I feel so fortunate to have Mohan Panda as my father. I do not know what I did to deserve the fortune of having him as my father. I have the best father. I am so proud of him. My brother and I are so lucky and so proud of my father. We feel very lucky to be his children. I am the luckiest child in the world for having Mohan Panda as my father (laughs) and Srimati Radharani taking care of me since I was born. Oh, by Srimati... And then she just went on her like relationship with Radharani. She's just rolling back and forth. And then I was just thinking, first of all, what 20 year old kid 
glorifies their father up and down. Like one of the first things comes out of her mouth. It was, it was like, oh my God, if kids of this world could turn out like this, by the banks of Radakund, I am the most fortunate girl in the world. People have material lives. I know I'm not interested whatsoever. I, cause she goes to, she goes to university or goes to school. She goes, I am happy to, she's like, it is not just in the West. Every materialistic mind is also here too. I am so not interested in the material world. I go to the university. I have lunch alone. I have this alone. I do that alone. And you know what? I am okay with that because Mohan Panda is my father and Radharani has been with me forever. That is my only care in the world that Radharani is with me and Mohan Panda is my father. <laughs> and then and then if you like this food, that is from my mother, my mother. And then she would go glorify the mother. And I was like, Oh, my kid. I wish my kids had this much devotion for me. I can't my, get my kids to uh, clean their room. Yeah. Anyway. She, that, and she kept on inviting, a, you know, oh, this is your house. Please, you come anytime. You sit where you like because this is your house. Um, and so Raga was saying, oh, well, be careful. If you say this, you know, the prashadam is so good and this is so nice here at Radha Kun, maybe I will move in. And she's saying, yes, yes, that is no problem. This is your house. The house, it is small, but my heart is so big. That's very good. <laughs> you please come, please. Every time you stay here. It was just like, and more of Radharani's mercy. We would love you, Radharani. We pray to Radharani every day. My grandfather, oh, how about my grandfather? My grandfather just left his body at Radha Kund. He was just chanting Radha's name, just chanting Radha's name continuously, all the time chanting. He died. I, he took the last palmful of water from my hand. He died with his head on my lap. And now he is at Radharani's feet. He is serving Srimati Radharani. Now Radharani has taken him and embraced him. And I feel embraced because he drank the palm of water from my hand before he left. I was like, where was that? He goes in here, right in my home with all my family. We were all there with him. It was just like, who is and this? And she was like joyful about it. Like she wasn't like morose that her grandfather had left his body. It was beautiful. Everything. He was a very great man. It was just, it was just a lesson on how to behave as a child, which we all got wrong. And uh, it was quite impressive. And then we went to the mystics house. We went to there for dessert. <laughs> Same thing. The kids love the parents. The parents love the kids. Here's a video of us sitting around every night playing Kirtan together as a family. It's like, who is this family? It's like the that's where Paige family Bhakti is going to go in their next life. They're going to go right to this, right to Radha Kund so they can uh, all sing together every night before they go to bed. Oop, Stoop is muted. Now, wonder he wasn't saying anything. <laughs> we like to keep it that way. Uh, I think he keeps on his internet. I was, I was gone for a little while there. There you yeah. go. There you are. Yeah, I, was, back. I was gone for a while. Could you hear what we said? Some of it. I mean, I missed it a lot. It was a Radharani, Radharani festival. I, I, think, I think I got, I got the main idea. But hey. we, left that, we left those houses like beaming, lit up. And we're still lit up. I just We just came home. We both took a nap for an hour. Nice. You know, I got that um, ladu from Natwar that you sent over. Ah, you did get a ladu from us, didn't you? That thing is a big brick of incredibly <laughs> spices in there, all kind of flavors in there. It feels like it's healthy to eat that thing. Yeah, I think it might be. I think it might be. Spiritually. Powerful. You got to do it. Like a... You got to bring that. You got to bring that doty down a little bit. Okay. Sorry, bring, sorry. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We've got a little peekaboo there. <laughs> peekaboo doty I'm wearing. Um, what about uh, what about the size of that thing? The, you it's guys a nice imagine. brick size. When you I'm see making these... a lot of people happy with that. Rogan, all the time. Because you, you can always oh, just really? people come over and you peel some of that off and you give it to them. It's like a gobstopper, a giant gobstopper. The thing is the size of a cannonball. So it's massive. Usually, when people think of a usually when people think of a you know a sweet ball, it's the size of one of the spongy red balls kids play with, yeah. kids play jacks with. This thing's the size of like a British cannonball from it's the seventeen hundreds. Big brick. Yeah, it's, it weighs like a brick, and it's just a brick of goody. A brick. Yeah, of, it's uh, like it, it, I, I, I would imagine there's got to be at least twenty five spices in there or something. You know, really? You the we had no idea. We didn't. We didn't pick at it. Camphor, maybe. Love to see the ingredients. 
it's got yeah. subtle flavors, you know, the mixing, but it feels like it's like dynamic in there. It feels like, oh, it's going to digest well and everything. Okay. All right. That's good. I'm glad you. So, okay. So I'm assuming there's a thank you in there somewhere, but. <laughs> um, for what now? <laughs> <laughs> delivering the goodie ball thank you mara thank you for sending that over <laughs> you're welcome you're stupid Happy to oh. anyway last uh, day in vrindavan tomorrow and then me and mara are going on the wind down a couple days in delhi uh, for some r and r so you're gonna go like a fancy hotel or something like that is what going on uh, yeah Little manny yes, petty okay yeah i'm gonna petty my whole body though <laughs> I'm like, take it, take all my old skin off right now. And I've been getting this massage by this guy. I tell you, his hands are so strong. He could like, if he was angry, he could strangle me. He's like, really? He's a thin, weak. He looks like a thin, weak old man. But he's wiry because he has a grip on. He has a grip on. I'd be scared to fight this man. If he went berserk, I don't know what I would do. But anyway, he just slathers me with mustard oil and then just beats the hell out of me. And I just <laughs> I'm like, ow, ooch, each, ow, ooh. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and uh guess what he charges? You're never gonna believe this. Oh, I don't know, 20 an rupees. An hour, an hour massage, people. Guess. 300 rupees. 300 rupees. 300 rupees. Less That's than like five dollars. Less than five bucks. I know. It's like, come on, charge me five hundred rupees. And he comes to your house. Comes to our room, lays up the mat, brings his own co- brings his own mustard oil, slathers me up. Yeah, and uh, you know what? I feel like I'm getting back on my feet now. I was really out of it. I had to slow down, and I, I, I'm di- I, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a, I feel a lot better today. Okay, then maybe we can get into the Bhagavatam today. Yes, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah let's do this. Mar- Mara's starting to look a little like a Bridge Bossy girl or something like that. Her hair, her hair is a little bit like messy. <laughs> she just woke up from her nap. <laughs> <laughs> I could see her running behind a buffalo or something like that. Right now. <laughs> I've quoted you three times today. What do you think? You're, what are you? What are you talking drinking about? Lassie, you're just monkeys. you're just drinking lassies, chasing monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By the way, I did uh, have a lawsuit uh, again today too. Yeah, oh. I'm sure you've had more than one over there. Did you have you did you go and spend some time in the Giri Raj Misty Bundar? We went to the new place. There's a new Giri Raj go over oh, Hold Misty it, Bundar. hold it, hold it. There's new. a new place. What's this new place. There's a new, new one in town. I did go to that one. Yes, I did. I guess you're on the other side of the hill now. You're staying on the it other side of Govardhan. Yeah, so there's a new one there. All right. But is it in the same league? Oh yeah, these guys, these guys are next oh, level. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Just making sure. Marriage. Are there any announcements? Um, no. Do we have announcements? <laughs> yeah. He was ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it was a false start. <laughs> we might not be able to get him started up again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have uh, some Bhakti Recovery Group meetings today at noon and 1.30 p.m. today. And um, tomorrow's show will be a little bit later than usual. 8 p.m. India time. Do the math oh on that, please, Duba. I'm, so, I'm so okay, tired right now. 10.30 a.m. <laughs> hey, Siri, what <laughs> what's is going on, guys? Indian time. 10.30 Oh, because you got to arrive in Delhi? That's the idea? Can't you just leave a little bit earlier? Let's wait. 5.50 p.m.? No, I can't be right. No, that's what time it is now. Um, I mean, maybe we do at least we should maybe do 7.30 our time. What What time is it? I don't know. It'll be 10 a.m. New York time. Yeah, that sounds better. Everybody good with Seven, that? Okay with 10 a.m. New York time. We're going to blow everybody out tomorrow. I mean, okay. so So do the math on that and I'll do it right. <laughs> People are saying no. <laughs> <laughs> Greg DeGase was like, I have a life too. <laughs> that's all you can get 10 a.m friday I am, i'm gonna get fired if i keep listening to you guys at work it's good for the west coasters they're all that's they've right. all given up at this point no sure, sure. yeah sure. sherry yeah it's okay. gonna be we'll me the stuba mara and sherry Anna. karuna likes oh karuna a. likes it karuna likes it okay and karuna there we go that's all we need all right all right anyway, at least we got just, karuna there we can go back that's we can go back to 8 a.m the next day but tomorrow we just have to play it safe or else we're going to do it like live from a taxi cab. Okay. Okay. So just make sure you get off early. Mary, that's on you. You know, right. 
Try to round yeah. them up. Get them Double in check that at the right time, though. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tojayam mudirya. Before he said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the super, most human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and the Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayeshva bhadreshu nicham bhagavat sevaya bhagavati utama sloke bhakti rabhavati naishtaki. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. In loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, we established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gyanat Tamarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Madatam Yena Tazmai Shri Gadaveda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer them obeisances at their lotus feet. Yeah. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Can't you know what, Raghunath, even before what? we go, there's just a squirrel. I just I have a feeling Mara deserves this uh, little spa treatment at the hotel coming. You know? Thank you. Oh, I, I said she could get a spa treatment. I didn't say at the hotel. <laughs> You're going to have to go to some budget one out expensive hotel. I got an. <laughs> just kidding. Not. Okay. Oh, he froze. Look, he froze. So no, he's just still. No, he's frozen. All right, here we go. Reading for Shuma Bhavatam, Canto Six, Chapter Nine, Chapter Nine, Text Five. Poor Kastuba's got a bad connection. Thereafter, the head meant for drinking somaras. Oh, this was a good part. Was transformed into a capindula, the Franklin partridge. Similarly, the head meant for drinking wine was transformed into a kalavinka, a sparrow, and the head meant for eating food became a tatiri, a common partridge. Text six. I think we read that yesterday. Yeah, but yes, yesterday's show didn't get uploaded. So oh, that's, that's right. Reading, uh, forgive me. If, you know, we actually had a blooped show yesterday. The show, whole show was just did not just did not work properly. Yeah, you know what I was thinking about that, Ragnar. Is what we rather than go through all that again, why don't we just give a quick summary of what we went through that never went up, and we'll just uh, oh, really? Okay, yeah, because well, what happens here is that, um, you know, Indra in the last chapter, Indra got the Narayan Kavacha that it was great news for the Devas, right? For the demigods, gave them power, you know, yeah. they, were re, they were rejuvenated, they were protected, they could fight against their, their enemies. And uh, and they were successful, and so that was great. Then this chapter opens up where we have the priest, the priest Vishvarupa, the young, brilliant priest, pure-hearted, you know, kind of like three-headed, three-headed. That was revealed. We didn't know that before, um, but um, you know, broad-minded in the sense that he's not like Indra, in that Indra's like there's our camp. And then there's the other camp. He didn't really see things that way. So while he was serving the devas and doing his ritualistic activities and incantations and so on on their behalf, if he was requested by the other side, by the asuras, to do a little something for them, he, he would accept that and do it for them too. You know, hey, if anybody asks me, I'll try to help. Indra didn't see it that way. Indra was furious about it. He felt betrayed. And I think especially what he felt was fearful, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Are you still there, kid? Man, he's freezing up. Now he's going to make me skip all this stuff. Oh, Kostuba. He said we're going to skip all this stuff, and now he, we don't know where to go because he had a plan. He did. A, he did have a plan. He didn't reveal his plan before he got muted. Ah, he dropped his. Well, he his signal dropped, and now he's going to come back. So if I start reading, and he's going to get mad at me. No, no, he's here. He's here. Let's okay. ask him. Hey, Kasuba, come on. What are you going to do? My my signal is going out left and right. Oh no! Yeah, it's hard. I don't know, it's been so strong. I don't know what's going on. In any case, I was saying that uh, Vishwarupa, he was doing some some service for the other side 
and um and andrew was you know he was really upset and so but you know more than just upset he was fearful you know it made him fearful like oh no if you help our enemy we'll suffer something's got to be done and in that fearful state of mind which that karmic mentality breeds you know pure devotion doesn't breed fear but that karmic mentality is i don't have what i want i, I don't have what i need you know it led him to kill this brahmin cut off all three heads and um for that um you know really uh low down dirty thing that he did you know a lot of bad karma came his way he suffered for it for a year and then through ritual he was able to kind of distribute that bad karma in four different directions i don't know if we need to get into all of that um it's it's a little confusing how he distributed yeah, it and, yeah and if you want to if you want to say well how is that right like how did he distribute the uh bubbles and foam in the water the women's menstrual cycle all that stuff it's sort of like we have no good answer for that how that works <laughs> i'm not and, good with that I can't, we talk about devotion a, on this show yeah no, we nothing. can't go with the satiated we can't figure out origins of origins of species it's just what okay. it says okay so, some so things i accept that i can't not get I mean, these things are there in, in all the different spiritual or religious traditions about how one's own bad karma, or one's own sin can be counteracted through ritual. Somehow he was able to do that. But you know what, Roganath? You, what? You're never really totally free of it because he killed the Brahmana and he's going to, we're going to just see how he just suffers so much still, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But here's the first thing that happened from that is that the father of Vishwarupa was named Twasta, the father of the priest that got killed. Yep. Obviously, he was very upset. My son, right, who's done nothing but try to help others, you killed him? He helped you so much. And just because he helped someone else, you killed him? What's the matter? He's furious. And that brings us to text 11, um, where we see what he was up to. After Vishwarup was killed, his father, Twasta, performed ritualistic ceremonies to kill Indra. He offered cool. oblations in the fire, saying, O enemy of Indra, flourish to kill your enemy without delay. Thereafter. Okay. No, hold it. I don't want to say slow down, but let's not move Thank forward you. yet. Thank you. <laughs> slow it down. Right, so why don't you... Now, now, what's happening here, Raghunath, is one of these. Um, there's a message here. It's a, it's a, as you wrote in your lovely song so many years ago. This is a message of the Bhagavatam here. Message of the Bhagavad, and that is that when you, when you give your life to God with no expectation of anything in return, it really doesn't matter if you do things. If, if you're expert in all the details of what you're trying to do, because then it's the motive that counts. It's the motive that's offered and the motive that's accepted. But if you want to work in the automated world of karma, right, then there's a price to pay, even if you're trying to do something and you do it just a little bit wrong. Now, what happened here is that is Twasta, Vishrupa's father, he was doing a ritual wherein he wanted to empower a being, kind of create a being that was empowered to kill Indra. But he made one little mistake in the inflection. I think that would be the right word here, right? Yeah. In, in, in the chanting of the mantra, in the inflection. And the, it made a difference in meeting where rather than empowering one to be the enemy of Indra, or rather than empowering the enemy of Indra, it empowered Indra against his enemy. It was just a little detail, but it was the exact opposite. That and, doesn't happen if you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Well, that's something worth some, talking about. Yeah, that is because I chant it wrong all the time. I do the wrong <laughs> and look how I'm doing all the time. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Imagine if every time you chanted it inappropriately, something would explode. Like, oh, I just blew up that chair because I said Hare Krishna. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we were, I took, um, oh, this is where I think we fell apart last show. I, I, 
Tara and I took that beautiful group. Kylie was there and Narayani who are both here today and, uh, and Patrick Heffernan and Cindy and Steve, we all went to Bhakti Vinod Thakur's house across the Jilangi oh, yeah. River. It seemed like good a time. And yeah, we had a great time and we spoke there for a while and we sang from Bhakti Vinod Thakur's songs and we talked for a while. Then we did some Kirtan. Tara Prabhu was leading Kirtan Ooh. and chanting. It was sweet, you know, it was just, it was just really nice. And the, the, the local people seemed to be getting into it. And then one local sannyasi came up to, t- he looked like he was in a good mood and everything. He came up and he whispered something in Tara's ear, you know, and we didn't know what he said. And then, and then we just kept going with the kirtan and Tara smiled when he said it, he kind of chuckled. And then, uh, and then we kind of forgot about that. But then as we were leaving, um, I don't know if it was Kylie or Narayan, I forget who asked um, Tara, Hey, what, what did the, what did that sannyasi say to you? And he said, Oh, he said I was chanting Hare Krishna wrong. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, you know, I, I, why don't you read the commentary and we can go more into this subject, but I think it's an important topic. Okay. Right here, text 11. Got it? Yeah. There was some defect in Tvasta's chanting of the mantra because he mm-hmm. chanted it long instead of short, and therefore the meaning changed. Tvasta intended to chant the word Indra Satro, meaning, O enemy of Indra. In this mantra, the word Indra is the possessive case, Shasti. And the word Indra Satro is called Tatpurusha compound. Um, Unfortunately, instead of chanting mantra short, Tvasta chanted it long, and its meaning changed from the enemy of Indra to Indra, who is an enemy. Consequently, Mm -hmm. instead of an enemy of Indra's, there emerged the body of Rithasura, of whom Indra was the enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was a technical mistake in his world of ritual, Vedic ritual, right? Yeah. But his intention didn't matter at all. What mattered was the precision of his execution and pronunciation of the mantra. And because that was off, not only did he not get the result he was looking for, he actually got the opposite result. So it ultimately it empowered injured to kill this creature that he's creating. Right? Now there's there's a, there's two different terms uh, when it comes to this kind of thing. There's a there's a term varnavad, which means literally it means according to the letters, like the exact letters, the exact pronunciation. And then there's a word spotavad. And spotavad literally means explosion, but what by explosion means the meaning gets across. Right? Like you what we it's kind of like if I anyway. what's that? We understand it anyway. Yeah, like if if I said something, if I shared an idea with you and the meaning got across, it's like a little explosion goes off in your head, like right? It's just like oh, I get it. Yep. And it doesn't matter if I said it right or wrong. As long as that explosion takes place, we're all good. Yeah. You know? And so there's a distinction where, you know, I wanted to pull up that verse. Maybe maybe I could find it. Maybe America can can Google this. If you Google 11th Canto Shumad Bhagavatam and um, running with eyes closed, I think hopefully you'll get the verse. It's it's first from the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. But it, what it's kind of showing is that we have two choices in the world, right? If we want to live, if we want to live for our own external material pleasure, then we're living in a world like an automated karmic world, right? It's like, it's all on automatic. Whereas if we turn back to Krishna, we're kind of like a a helpless little child. And we say, I don't want the automated world. I want to surrender my life to you. Then it's like, now it doesn't matter whether you get things right or wrong. It's all about your intention, right? It's like Krishna takes personal care. So here, Twasta, he was operating in that automated world, right? Where according to your action, you get the result. Are you, are you muted? You're muted, Ragna. I'm okay. You? I'm good. I hear you. All right. You're back. Did you get that verse, Mara? Yes, I did. You, you, would, would you like um, to read? Can you tell us what 11, verse it is? 
Yeah, it's Canto 11, Chapter 2, Text 35. Okay. One who accepts this process of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead will never blunder on this path in on his path in this world. Even while running with eyes closed, he will never trip or fall. That that's that's it right there, right? It's on the path of devotion, it's and this is being said in contrast to the path of Vedic karmic ritual. Which is most of the Vedas, which is most of the this very interesting stuff we study. Which is why every now and then you will hear someone like correct you. Hey, you're chanting that improperly. That's the wrong enunciation. You put the highlight on the wrong uh, syllable, etc. Because those things make a big difference. In bhakti, intention is everything. What's your yeah. intention behind it? God understands the intention of this child. You know, uh, the parent understands the intention of the child, even though the child speaks with broken English, say. So right. I think that's a huge thing to understand, especially um, when we're dealing with academics who can find tons of fault in how you and I chant Narayanam Namaskritya. doesn't mean we shouldn't try to learn how to say things better. Um, we should. But the same, yeah. But at the same time, it's not the final, uh, it's not how you pass the test necessarily. Yeah, you know, there's a story where some of the local Brahmanas in Vrindavan were criticizing uh, Prabhupada's Western disciples for their Sanskrit pronunciation. And, you know, hey, they don't pronounce things very well, you know. And yeah. Prabhupada knew, you know, from Prabhupada's perspective, I don't want to necessarily say exactly, you know, what was, but I can imagine he's thinking, here's these local Brahmanas who sit in their temples and ring the bells and do the rituals and are proud of their birth and their position, potentially. And they're criticizing these people who gave up everything, gave their entire lives to serve the mission of that name that they're chanting maybe improperly, right? In other words, right. they didn't, they, they gave everything for it. So Prabhupada said their pronunciation may not be good, but their application is good, right? How they apply it. And they're applying it pure heartedly. They're applying it, giving everything. And that's really what it's all about. And there's a term, there's a, like a name for Krishna that comes in a verse from the book, the Chaitanya Bhagavat. I can read the verse it comes from. This is the verse. It says, Morko vadati vishnaya dhiro vadati vishnave ubayos tu samam punyam bhava grahi janardana. And that's, that's the term right there. That's a name for Krishna. Janardana is the name of Krishna. Uh, Means the infallible, is that right? I believe Janardana means the infallible. Janardana, no, it means best among men. Oh, best among men, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I'm thinking of a chuta for some reason. Yeah, Janardana, best among men. Bhava Grahi, Janardana. Grahi means you receive something, you take something. And Bhava means you t take the mood. He accepts the mood. Bhava Grahi Janardana. He's, he's, not, he's not, when you offer to him, it's not that he's accepting your expertise. Krishna, right. this is something so fascinating about Krishna. Mm. I mean, you get to the top of the universal pecking order, right? And it's not like a power hungry person, it's a love hungry person. And, mm. right? Well, like and, it, it's not a power hungry person, it's a, it's a love, love hungry, hungry person. I think and I'm I, love hungry. <laughs> So anyway, so so when you get to Krishna, all he's interested in is is the devotional mood. That's it. So so the verse says, at the time of offering obeisances to Lord Vishnu, a foolish person, let's say a oh, Kostuba, please no. Please, Mr. Freeze. Okay, I'm gonna talk for a second. Okay, um well while is out of out of it frozen i just want to mention there's such a, a valid point with um i hear it all the time people who are you know white male or women who come give themselves to bhakti yoga krishna consciousness get into it you're right they don't speak the language right they don't know all the rituals perhaps right but they've given their life and we were just talking to bridge on prabhu who said he joined when he was 
he got into Bhakti when he was 20, 22 years old or something like that, or 20 years old, 1967. In two years, Catherine, how long have you been doing this for? How long have you been chanting Hare Krishna? Two years. Okay. Two years. His guru looked, put his hand on his back and said, you go to uh, th- uh, go to Hong Kong, start a temple, start a temple in Hong Kong. I don't know anything about Hong Kong. Well, that's what I want you to do. Goodbye. He's like, what? Mm-hmm. That's what happened. That's just what happened. And uh, then he said, well, I'm all alone there. He goes, OK, well, we'll send you a wife. He did arranged marriages back then. And it was just sort of like, we're Americans. We don't even know what arranged marriages is. We don't even know. We don't know anything. We were just hippies a moment ago. And it was just like that. Like, but they were like both whatever my guru says. I'm going to go to Hong Kong. I don't know how to speak the language. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to buy real estate. I don't know how to rent anything. He just had to figure out everything. And imagine if they did. I mean, that first generation of devotees, they were so empowered. They were so off the charts. They were so I will do anything for my guru. It, they've got special of mercy from Prabhupada. And so a lot of times you want to say, well, these guys aren't Indian. They're, you know, these white guys from America. What do they know? They knew. They gave everything. Damn. They knew, huh? Kostuba, where are you? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> oh, look around. who dropped in. It's the Bombay girls. Harry Bull. Oh, get out of Harry here. Bull. The Bombay girls are here. Harry Bull. Say hello, you guys. <laughs> there they are. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Eco Village last year. We really look forward to seeing all of you soon, very soon. <laughs> very energy, soon. Hopefully. <laughs> Love That's these awesome. guys. Sit down, please. We're talking about uh, Americans Devotional versus topics. Indians. No, no, just, <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> awkward time to step in here. Three <laughs> pure young Indian girls. Uh, but anyway, so. It, you know, whether a person's Indian or American, we got to look through that surface thing and look at what their inten- intention is anyway. That's Even, right. For a guy like Burry John, who's from like, probably well-to-do, you know, American He's a Brooklyn family. guy. He's a Bro- uh, he's a Long Island guy. It's a, to move into an ashram in India. They were talking about like being in India. When did he come to India first? 1982. He said it was so austere. Like the, the, the Americans had to sacrifice their standard of living. They were not used to no air conditioning in the summer and summers get hot and no heat in the winter. Winters are cold without any heat in, in Vrindavan and no facility and no telephone and no electricity that it was like camping out every day in a foreign country that didn't speak English. And it was, it, yeah, it, 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 in their foreign diseases. It was a, it was a Maha sacrifice that they went through. Why? To serve their guru. That's the only reason they didn't understand anything about Hinduism or India or any, whatever their guru said. You know what I said to Burijan yesterday, Prabhu? Prabhu, I asked a question. I said, listen, Burijan, I got a question for you. Because sometimes when I explain Krishna consciousness to people and how we do it on the show, we say, listen, you want to understand a guru. It's not by the length of a person's beard. That makes them a guru. Or where they were, or if they wear very beautiful, flowing clothing, that doesn't make them a guru. To really understand what a guru is, start studying Srimad Bhagavatam. Start um, become de- developing discernment. And then you can understand what a guru is. Otherwise, you're just picking someone out of sentiment like, oh, they look so saintly. Oh, my God, he's so beautiful. Or she's she looks so wise. That's just pure sentiment. So I asked him the question. I said, sometimes I hear the Prabhupada disciples say things like, then Prabhupada walked in and he flicked his hands. And I knew at that moment he was my guru. What do you say to that? It sounds very sentimental. And he said, well, that's a good question. I guess if we were correct, it wasn't sentimental. It was Krishna directing us. But if we were, if, if it was a failure and Prabhupada wasn't the great master he was, then it would have been sentimental. But I guess because, but that's what happened for me. I saw Prabhupada and I knew this person was my spiritual master. Hmm. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I get it. Um, but I think the important thing was Prabhupada was teaching them not to leave it there right like prop prop was teaching that hey don't un, don't misunderstand the nature of our relationship you know right you know, he, he, he not taught them what magic to, person he, he taught them when to look for red flags if i start right. saying this 
that should be a red flag for you. If I start walking around saying, I am God, you'll become God. You should understand, I'm not teaching you the truth. Here's the truth. People don't, you're not supposed to say this. He taught, mm. he taught how to develop that discernment. Yeah, that's right. Oh. All right. I, I've got that verse back up. Maybe I can get through reading it this time. You ready? I'm on. The verse with the Bhava, Bhava Grahi Janardana, right? Krishna who accepts the Bhava, he accepts the flavor, the mood behind your mantra, let's say. So at the time of offering obeisances to Lord Vishnu, an inexperienced um, person chants, Vish, Vishnaya Namaha. This is improper due to faulty grammar. And a learned person chants, Vishva, Vishva, Vishnave Namaha, which is the correct form. But both achieve equal piety by their offering of obeisances because Lord Sri Janardana sees the sentiment of the living being. In other words, he sees the degree of devotion. Or in other words, he awards the result accordingly. He does not see one's lack of experience, let's say, or lack of intelligence. So this is, this is you know, this is Krishna. He's just, even if you do everything upside down, every, you do everything wrong, right? Krishna goes to the home of Vidura, right? Mm -hmm. Visits his home. He, he, he walked away from the, he received an invitation to go to whose home? Duryodhana's. The Kuru, the Kuru Emperor just meant he's going to get the full. You ever go to some of those feasts like in India where it's like they got like those a shiny house. Yeah. Or, or even those places where there's like there's like 40 of those like those shiny kind of catering things out there with like all different like each one with like an unbelievable have, different I've, kind of dish. I've been to wealthy people's house in Bombay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like a big Prashad party. So it can be incredible. So. Krishna was invited to that kind of spread. Yeah. And, and, um, and gave him, offered him a place to stay, a beautiful place to stay. It's like, thing. you want five star? We got five star for you. We got the best food for you. What else do you need, Krishna? Krishna, Krishna said, not interested. Not interested. Not interested whatsoever. You know what I'm <laughs> no. interested? I'll stay on a cot. I'll stay on the floor of a person who practices bhakti. I will so eat. the door's house. I will eat a banana peel, not a banana. Well, explain, explain what happened. Well, out of, out of rapture for love, Vidura Rani, the wife of Vidura, you know, you, you're, she's so wrapped in love looking in Krishna's eyes. Krishna, the Lord of her heart. Krishna, the object of her meditation. Krishna, the, the, the Devati Deva, the Lord of the demigods, knocked on her door and said, I am hungry. And in her mood of, I cannot believe my Lord of my life is here. When she threw open the door and looked into Krishna's eyes, she just lost it. And she said, Krishna, do you want food? Let me give you food. And she peeled the banana, threw the banana on the floor, and shoved the banana <laughs> peel in Krishna's mouth. And Krishna started chewing it. And he even started chewing the, the, the sticker, the sticker <laughs> on the banana. And, 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 and oh, hold it. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, I think the sticker, Did I mention that? sticker on that banana. I think so. Okay. I think it says that. Chiquita. Joel bananas. Chiquita. And so Christian uh, chewed that banana and uh, a banana peel. And he didn't even say anything. He continued and he got she did it again. She ate, he ate another banana peel. And finally, when Vidura came home and he's like, what is what is going on? The Lord of our life is here and you're you're the best cook. And, and you're feeding him banana peels. Uh, Davy, what is going on? And Krishna interrupted and said, oh, these are so sweet. These banana peels are so sweet. You don't understand. <laughs> and, the, 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 and the purport and this ongoing theme in all Vedic Puranic stories is that love is higher. Love is the highest thing. Don't forget what all the rituals are for. Don't forget Don't what all the beautiful. What's the ritual? The, the ritual of cooking. Uh, you know, it's uh, the cooking is a meditation uh, in Vedic culture. It's not just cooking for our belly. Cooking is a meditation, and you refine your cooking, refine your spices. Why? Because it's an offering of love. So if you're doing it just to satisfy the palate, that's a whole different food. If you're doing it as an offering mm -hmm. for God, that's a whole different world as well. Same as everything we do. Just like, look at my beautiful clothing today. Okay? I don't dress up to look cool. I dress up because I think Krishna likes it. That's how I... <laughs> you can have fashion. 
You can dress up nicely. Don't say oh, a thing. Good. What are you going to say? She pick, <laughs> now she picks up the why, mic. Why now does Krishna like this. that? <laughs> well, you had a very you... cool look going on. I had a, we could describe it. I had a great course. look today. I had a lungi yeah. jacked up to shorts with, okay. with high tops, with high, with uh, uh, pulled two, up socks, with pulled up socks to white my socks. knees and white sneakers because my heels were all cracked. Yeah. So I had to put Vaseline on my feet and wear um, sneakers and high socks today. And and I see. Was, it was it what Catherine says it looked cool. It looked cool today. Okay. And you know what? It was for Krishna. It was for Krishna. I think with Krishna... those heels, Raghunath, you got to soak your feet after you walk long distance barefoot. And you have to get a little brush and get the dirt out of those cracks. Yeah, I got it. That's the I key. It. I did that last yeah. night, but now I'm walking around with safety safety socks, I call it. <laughs> okay. Um but, but anyway, I'm sure my you, point is Krishna was very every pleased of culture. Doesn't have to be rejected because oh these uh, uh, I like to dress up now I'm, uh, it's okay if you dress up a lot of people are really into fashion it's okay just don't dress up for Krishna don't dress up to impress mm -hmm. the opposite sex the same sex or whatever dress up for Krishna put your tea lock on nicely for Krishna cook nicely for Krishna play play harmonium beautifully for Krishna everything is now an offering to Krishna and what it happens is it bypasses the ego immediately. You don't have to just say, OK, uh, Krishna uh, doesn't like us to be attached to clothing, so I'll just wear rags. That doesn't mean you're over ego. There's a lot of people that wear rags. that think they're really cool in those ragged up clothes. Mm? You're cutting right through it, Raghunath. You're, nothing's getting past you. Yeah. <laughs> from, the, uh, from the yoga days, you know. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you want to do a little yoga. You know, if I did some yoga, you know, it was a little like a handstand maniac. And, you know, it was the, the story of the guy I was doing. I was doing, you know, yoga in a class one time. And, you know, I, I like to stay in the back of the room and do my own little practice. I add a handstand. I add a crow. I lift a leg when you're, you know, when you're. And the teacher came over me to me like the Buddha and said, do less. Like. What, the hell? <laughs> what are we talking about? Do less. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, wise Buddha for instructing me. Now how about I pay you less? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now, my point is like, I wasn't, the point is do less. I get it. Uh, if you're doing it with your ego, do less. But I wasn't doing it with my, right. I, I just needed to stretch my body and move my body. And that's how I, actually became satisfied so I could be a little bit more peaceful. If I was to do less, I'd be agitated. And you can do less and still be in your ego. Hmm. And you could do yes. more and do it without ego. It just depends whether you're doing it with ego or not. And yeah. that's the whole gist of this whole game we're playing. Do it. Move forward. Be strong. Do what you need to do. Just do it without an ego. Do it as an offering. Hmm. That's it. That's our show. That's our show today, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> We're gonna hold on. We you need not time. say anything else after that. <laughs> All right. I won't try. Huh? Make it try. an offering. Offer it to Krishna. Offer it all to Krishna. That's a T-shirt, right there. We were walking around today. See, like, see if she short. wasn't ready for that. You cut it too short. You cut the show off short. I'm oh, sorry. I wasn't ready. Oh, well, actually, OK, well, actually, that is the show. I mean, that is the that is the show. show. Actually, it's it's 625 <laughs> and the Bombay girls are here. They want they've got questions. They want to be answered here. But I guess that is time for the show, too. I, I, I just thought we were I thought we had much more time. That's why I was like, mic drop. Goodbye. <laughs> but that is actually the show. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> Would it be? Oh, you that's, have to that's the, show up before the, you don't even come be, until the show's already started practically. Oh, you're going to get it when this camera goes <laughs> off, lady. <laughs> I'm going to get you for that. Our internet connection is unstable. Oh. All right. I've been with Mara for almost two years now. It's true. And we've never fought. Now, some people like, I know Jiva G is like perk, something perking in Jiva G, right? Oh, there's something wrong with you then. <laughs> no, there's not. We just don't fight. <laughs> it's... I don't know. Do you th I don't think Jiva and Lex fight. What? They seem to be. Yes. I mean, yeah, Jiva's you know, and I'm Lex, basically. Because yeah, in maybe. each of those relationships, there's one mild natured person. Yes. <laughs> Who's the mild one? 
I'll leave that. I'll leave that for you. To our viewing discretion. (laughs) (laughs) She she doesn't fight back. (laughs) No, I don't fight. I'm not fighty. You're not. I'm like a Labrador, you know. (laughs) What the Bombay girls are questioning that I'm not. All right. Anyway, let's go on with this. Okay. Would you like some takeaways, please? Yes. What was my takeaway? I said something that was good earlier, right? You said something quite profound. It was something like, uh, oh, love, love, hungry. Oh, yeah. Be love hungry, not power hungry. Yeah. No, Krishna's love hungry, not power hungry. Yeah. But I mean, it goes for us, too. Yeah. 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 Krishna's not power hungry. He's love hungry. Let's say that. that. Okay, sure. Got it. Uh, Pure devotional service doesn't breed fear. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Give your life to God with no expectation of return. Nothing. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, know, I don't remember tough, saying that. It's one of those Zen things. Like, if you want nothing in return, you get everything. But only when uh, you want nothing. Right? Isn't it, it like sort that? Of zen. This is sort of Zen, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. If you're trying to work in the world of karma, there's a price to pay. Oh, yeah. You know, the thing about dotis is mosquitoes rip your feet apart. Everything else is safe. But your feet become like... See, Raghunath, that was impolite to Mara. She was doing her job, and you just trying to do my service. Can can she how do about, her service? Cor- how about correcting me in front of thirteen thousand people? <laughs> when I'm just making an interesting statement. <laughs> it wasn't at all interesting, though. That's the thing. It is. If you've never worn a dhoti, it's very interesting that you can be completely safe from mosquitoes in a mosquito-hungry land, okay. and and and, and uh, except for your feet. Thank People you, walk around here itching their feet all day. Thank Go you. On. For Bhaktas, it's intention that matters, not pronunciation. Yep. That's intention right. is yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Krishna accepts the mood and flavor behind the offering. Mm-hmm. Baba Grahi Janardana. Dodi fun facts with Raghunath. <laughs> Thanks, AJ. Love is the highest. Don't forget what all the rituals are for. <laughs> Don't forget. Love is the highest. <laughs> Stu just waved his finger. I want a Don't photo forget. of you just waving your finger. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is like your eternal position. Nah, nah. Only for you, Raghunath. You see, what you don't understand is only for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go on. All right. Offer it all to Krishna. And... You already did that one, didn't we? Oh, that was okay. That and was the last one. There was a great one we had today. That's going to be right now. Okay, what? Wear your sneakers for Krishna. There you go. He didn't have a good final, a good final one. Uh, oh, all right. Thanks for Catherine A. and the Bombay Girls for joining us. Woo! That sounds like a TV show, doesn't it? The Bombay Girls. Yeah. You guys should start a podcast or something. Well, there's a bo- Bombay Sisters is the uh, name of a big musical. Team, right? The Bombay sisters. Bombay sisters? It yeah, ask them. They, they'll know. We need a little statue of Kastuba like the ones in the sushi restaurants with the cat moving its paw. <laughs> the same thing about Kastuba moving oh, his going back with the Maniki Neko cat <laughs> just moving his finger up and but down. But you see, it'll be good if it's not the wrist. It should just be the finger like this. Just, yeah. With a head bobble. With a head bobble. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us by Radharani's Mercy. I'm going to start saying that all the time, like, like those kids said. By Radharani's Mercy, we had another episode of the show. And it's really true. They are so focused on Radharani. Amazing. It made me realize, like, i got to focus on Radharani's Mercy. i got to focus on Radharani more. i got to chant Radha's name more. Look at that, Raghun. Manish took a snapshot and posted your finger on the message board for everybody to post on Facebook today. Uh, Rodney. So, uh, Bombay girls, what are you doing here? You're gonna have to tell us. All right, quick, quick. Bombay girls got initiated, right? And um, we get drawn to Rajshri Radhakun, so that's why we're staying here at Govardhan. So that we can visit um, the Sri Radhakan every morning and evening. How long are you here for? We are here till 18th of November. Yeah. Oh, good for you. What about work? Do you have to go to work? Mm-hmm. These Indians are just take off work. 
just lost my job two days back. Congratulations. Wait, wait, wait a second. Rod, Rod around his mercy. Lost, Rod, Rod around his mercy. Wait a second. You lost your job two days back. Was it any reason you lost your job because you said, I'm going away for a month? I was. I wanted to. I've been like manifesting that, and I think she does that every year. She manifests unemployment. You are. You are a real manifester. It's like unemployment, Davy. She blesses yeah. you with unemployment. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I want, I'm wondering how Indians just take off and come to come to Vrindavan for a month. Uh, love and separation. So being away from Vrindavan, it's not easy. So to, when we find like weekend, we just like I don't know. Has been coming. Oh yeah, and this year, yeah. The train stuff knew her all. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> yeah, well, I head HR for a big IT company in India. It's an American IT firm, but uh, and I craft the vacation time. And Very I good. We have good vacations. <laughs> Very so smart. You, they should all work for you so that you can work this all out for them. Yes, yes. Why don't you hire them? What about you? Are you employed? Talking. She's talking Are to you the camera. fully employed. <laughs> I'm gonna be hiring uh, my sister soon. Wait, what? You're gonna be hiring? I'm starting my own business, so I'm gonna be hiring my sister this time and give her like a month long leave every year. All right, that's. Wait a second. Which one nice. are your si sisters? You two are sisters. Okay. She's a god sister. All initiated think... by Giri Raj Swami. I think uh, Karuna's here saying, I, I think I need to work for these people over there. Get a job with them and then just yeah, you go want to, to hire a 10 year old. Do you have any uh, labor? Uh... Yeah, I listen to all of the shlokas that she has by hearted, and I really, really love listening to them. <laughs> the Bombay girls are really dialed into Wisdom of the Sages. That's right. They know, they know everything about us. Uh, they know Catherine, about vegan how trucker. are you today? Here, come over here, Catherine. Get Catherine on. Oh, okay, Bombay girls. You, can, you don't have to leave, but it's okay. Catherine, I come here quick. Hello, hi Krishna. Hey, how's it going, Catherine? How was your day today? How was how was lunch with the pure devotee family? Amazing. The children are amazing. They have so much love for Matthew Adirani and their parents, and the food was impeccable, and just their love. They just have like unconditional love. So yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, what an amazing day, huh? I bathed them out of cuns. Then I came shave. here. Got you got a fresh shave. Oh, wow. Look at that. She did get a fresh shave. All right. Okay, Bombay girls. Now it's time for you to step it up and get a fresh shave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Right, what buddy. is hair? What is hair anyway? <laughs> doing it like since two years now. By the way, I read something amazing in the Mirabai book that you recommended to me. Uh, oh, you got that book? Yeah. What did you think of it? I got it two months ago, and I've been reading uh, "Following the Cowherd Boy." Following uh, the Cowherd Boy. Amazing yeah. that I read today uh, was: uh, if you're a Jnana Yogi, then you meditate on the holy names. If you're a Karma Yogi, you offer ev all of your actions to the holy names. But if you're a bhakti yogi, you love the holy names. Right. Uh, Kostuba, look at like Kostuba's finger. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I've never heard that anywhere. <laughs> no, Raghunath, that's only you that gets this, okay? That's only for you. Raghunath, uh, I offer this only to you and to no one else. Okay. There I you think go. you should, uh, your whole team should shave their head. Kostuba, I just wanted to say that I miss you and we hope to see you soon. Oh, I'll see you. I'll see you in January. You, well, you can see him in uh, Mayapur. He's in Mayapur right now. You come to Mayapur? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, Giraj Maharaj is planning to go in Pep. So if it works out, I might join. But nothing nothing oh, before God. that. I don't think. So okay. That. Are these people then I'll so see nice? you in January. You know, Indians are just night. They're just a nicer race of people. I was thinking about oh. wisdom of the sages. People are a nicer oh. race of people. Maybe. Also maybe. true, I find. Maybe. You got something against Indian people, Mara? Just say it. Just come out with it. What's that? No, I like all <laughs> listeners. The <laughs> like same. All like listeners. all of our listeners. Well, you got to get to. So? You got to get to know them. You got to. You might not like them. Like you, 
I just think <laughs> Indians in general, I've got a feeling these ladies they're are just, pious they're just pious. They're just good, good people. Good people. Where did we good go people. so wrong? What happened? You're good people, Raghunath. You're, you're good. Can we leave on a higher note? I mean, I think. Let's leave on a higher note. Then. Okay. That's what I said. Right. Raghunath's good people. Yeah. Yeah. That's the takeaway. Take that away. <laughs> <laughs> like a t-shirt of before you wave your finger at me i'm good <laughs> okay beautiful people it's a beautiful day for a beautiful day let the magic continue to flow howdy bow